So I will I will state the uh, separating hyperplane theorem that we need. So the theorem is the separating hyperplane theorem. Let C subset of R n B A. convex set and let y be a point in the exterior of C bar, C bar is simply the closure of C. So, I am allowing the set to be not closed, but let us take the closure of the set and then consider a point y that lies outside. Right. So, here you have you have a set C which is probably not not closed, but then you take its closure that closure will the closure is also a convex set and then you take a point y ok, take a point uh, take a point y that lies outside the outside the closure then the claim is there exists a vector a not equal to 0 such that a transpose y is less than if I take the infimum of a transpose x as x ranges over c. So, there exists a vector a not equal to 0 such that a transpose y. So, this is a vector in in R n such that A transpose y is less than the infimum of A transpose x uh, as x ranges over c. Now, what why, how does this define a separating hyperplane? So, for that the normal to the hyperplane is the vector A, A is the, the, uh, the normal of the hyperplane. Where is my B? The, the where is for, for a hyperplane I need to define I need to talk of a, a as a, as a b right a scalar b yes so I can I have that these two values are uh, one the left one is strictly less than the right one right so I can always fit in a take a value b that lies in between them so this is right a value b that is greater than a transpose y but at the same time less than the infimum of A transpose x over x and c. So, look at a consider a value b that lies in between then then clearly and then look at the hyperplane h defined by such that A transpose x is equal to b. Then in that case y lies on one side of the hyperplane and the entire set C lies on the other side. Why does the entire set C lie on the other side? Because we know that infimum of A transpose x, x and C is greater than B, which means that A transpose x is greater than B for all x and C. So, the entire entire set C lies uh, on one uh, on one side of the hyperplane, and on the other uh, on and and as far as y is concerned, we know A transpose y is less than B, so it lies on the other side. Right. So so this 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 theorem basically guarantees for you uh, implicitly a separating hyperplane. It is giving you that it's giving you the slope as well as uh, as well as the uh, implicitly through this is also letting you pick an intercept. You can pick any intercept uh, ranging from anywhere in between here that, that is uh, that is that is perfectly ok. All right. okay. 
so now using this we will be uh, we will be proving the strong duality theorem okay so now what are we trying to, what are we going to prove let's go back to the uh, uh, let's go back to the statement of the theorem we want to prove this red statement here the statement says that uh, if either primal or dual has a finite optimal value then so does the other and these values are equal okay the other theorem uh, other statement which is that if either primal or dual is unbounded then the uh, then the other must be infeasible that is trivial we just we argued that directly by looking at uh, at weak duality okay so now we are going to look at the strong duality theorem so suppose the optimal value of the primal is finite and equal to say some z0 okay let me just denote that by z0 that's the optimal value of the fine of the primal okay now i'm going to uh, define this set this set c as follows it is the set of r comma w such that r is equal to t z 0 minus c transpose x and w is equal to t b minus a x as and I allow x to, to be greater than equal to 0 and t to be greater than equal to 0. So, c is this set of r comma w that satisfy this okay so it is the set of r comma w that can be expressed in the following way it can r can be expressed as t z 0 minus c transpose x for x greater than equal to 0 and t greater than equal to 0 and w can be expressed as t b minus a x for x greater than equal to 0 and t greater than equal to 0 okay for the same x and t greater than equal to 0 your r can be expressed in this way and w can be expressed in this way this is this is the set c all right now what is the what kind of a set is this set c if you look at this set c how can you tell me what are, what is its dimension how many in what space does it lie what is the dimension of r and what is the dimension of w so r here is is r a scalar or a vector yes r is a scalar r is t z 0 minus c transpose x okay t here is has to be a scalar otherwise the, uh, i will not be able to add it to uh, c transpose x right c transpose x is a scalar so and z 0 is another scalar so t is also a scalar okay so t is a scalar so here t is a is a scalar x is a vector x is a vector or your original vector this is or in the original space so x is a vector in rn so r therefore is a scalar what about w what is the dimension of w yeah w has, has as the length of w is as many as the rows of a right so the w is in rm okay so c itself is a subset of r m plus 1 all right okay now so now let us ask what type of set what kind of a set is c so suppose r comma w belongs to c okay and i give you a lambda greater than equal to 0 then what can you say about lambda w comma lambda lambda r comma lambda w so if r comma w belong to c that means r, r it just means that there exists x greater than equal to 0 t greater than equal to 0 such that r is equal to t z 0 minus c transpose x and w is equal to t b my t b minus a x now if i multiply both sides by lambda in both equations 
then what would I get? I would get lambda r equals lambda t my z 0 minus c transpose lambda x and lambda w as lambda t into b minus a into lambda x. Lambda is a scalar. Right. So, what this means is if if I have if lambda if r comma w belongs to c and lambda is some scalar greater than or equal to 0, then lambda r comma lambda w can be uh, are also in c and the corresponding value of t and x is just lambda times the earlier erstwhile t and the lambda times the erstwhile x. Okay. So, by so essentially so, these are also greater than or equal to 0. So, which means lambda r comma lambda w belong to C. Now, if if a set C is of this kind where if a, a, if it is uh, if r comma w belongs to C then lambda r lambda w belongs to C for lambda greater than or equal to 0 then what kind of a set is this? It is a cone. Okay. So, C is a cone. It is also very easy to show that C is actually a closed cone. So, in fact, C is a is a cone and C is closed. C is a closed cone. What about the convexity of C? Is C convex? It is convex. You see, C is defined using a bunch of linear equations and inequalities, right. So, it is just r comma w that satisfies some linear equations you can think of it this way you can think of a set comprising where the variables are it's you can think of a set s like this which is r w x and t such that r is equal to t z 0 minus c transpose x w is equal to t b minus a x and x is greater than or equal to 0 and t greater than or equal to 0. If you look at a set S like this, the projection of this set onto the R w on the R w axis is my set C, right. So, if I take the shadow of this set on, on the R w space, that, that set is actually C. C is projection of S on the r comma w on the r w space. And what kind of a set is S? Well, S is actually a polyhedron, it is it is just a bunch of linear uh, it is it is uh, it is a vector that satisfies some linear inequalities right. It is a set of vectors that satisfy linear inequalities. So, S is a S is itself a polyhedron. So, the shadow of a polyhedron has to be a polyhedron. So, this is a projection. So, therefore, C is a polyhedron and hence convex. So, many proofs in optimization begin with this one question first. What kind of a set is this? Right? You, you encounter a set, you ask what kind of a set is this? right and more you can say about the set more you will be able to uh, say about the problem uh, okay all right so now what have we concluded well that c is a cone c is convex uh, closed and c is also convex all right so what we have is a closed convex cone all right now let's look at this point let's say a point like this say a point 1 comma 0 is this 1 comma 0 what I mean by that is so 1 here is a scalar is a scalar and 0 is the vector. So, this is a vector ok this is a point in R m plus 1 right. So, this vector is, is a 0 vector in R m. Now, this point can you does this question is does this does 1 comma 0 lie in C. 
is this 1 comma 0 out in C right. So, let us check. So, suppose it does ok. Suppose it does, then then means that there exists t greater than equal to 0 and x greater than equal to 0 such that your 1 which is in the place. So, your r equals 1 and w equals 0 now. So, r that means 1 is t z 0 minus c transpose x and w equal to 0 means that 0 is equal to T b minus A x right. Now, here again so, so, so if 1 comma 0 belongs to C, then it means that you can find T greater than equal to 0 and x greater than equal to 0 that meet that satisfy these equations. Now, let us take two cases. So, case 1, so case A suppose is that here the t that you got is positive ok. If the t that you got is positive, if you if the t that you got is positive then I can divide uh, throughout by t and I get that I get that 1 by t minus z. Uh, so, I get let me write this again I get that c transpose x by t is equal to z 0 minus 1 by t. I can I in and the second equation if I divide throughout by t I get I get also that x a a into x by t is equal to b. Now, I already have x greater than equal to 0 t greater than equal to 0 this means that x by t is greater than equal to 0. Now, what has what have I got now as a result in this case? In case a if t is positive then I have concluded that I these equations must must hold, but what are these equations? This is saying x by t satisfies a into x by t equals b and x by t greater than equal to 0 and the so x by t is therefore feasible x by t is feasible for the primal. But then what is the op, what is the value of x by t? It is z not minus 1 by t that means it is strictly its value is strictly less than z naught right. So, it is a feasible value the uh, feasible point for the primal whose uh, whose value is less than uh, less than z naught and what was z naught here? z naught we had said that z naught is the optimal value of the prime right. So, so what this means is if t is greater than 0 we have effectively constructed a point whose value is even better than the optimal value that is a contradiction right. So, is feasible. So, x by t is feasible for uh, for the primal and has objective value strictly less than z naught which is a contradiction. Right. So, case A therefore, is impossible means you cannot have t to be strictly positive ok. Now, let us go to the other case case B case B would be since t is greater than equal to 0 the only case remaining is t equal to 0. Now, if t has if t is equal to 0 which means that these boxed equations here these boxed equations must are hold with t equal to 0 right. So, so if I what what do I get if I put t equal to 0? I get c transpose x equal to minus 1 right and I get a x equals 0 right. So, this implies c transpose x equals minus 1 and a x equals 0 
Now, what does this mean? X, so, remember x, x and a, a, t, x and t, okay, x and t are simply you simply have x greater than equal to 0 and t greater than equal to 0. The x is here is not necessarily feasible for the primal, it is just some vector of length n. We are not saying a x equals b as well. Here we constructed an x by t which became feasible, right. Now, if a x equals 0 and c transpose x equals minus 1, what do we get? What, what is this saying? If a x equals 0, it means that x is in the null space of a. Right. So, we have found a direction okay, such that it uh, if I go in that null in that direction my a a times that direction will not change. Right. So, what this means is so if I have say any feasible value. So, if I have say an x tilde such that a x tilde equals b and x tilde is greater than or equal to 0, then x plus x sorry x tilde plus x would also satisfy this because x, x tilde plus x would give me still would still be a x tilde and x tilde plus x would also be greater than or equal to 0. Now, what sort what does this remember what we, we used to we had we had a name for this a direction along which you can keep going but and without leaving the set. This is a recession direction right. So, what this means is your x here is a recession direction right x is also remember greater than or equal to 0. So, it is greater than or equal to 0 it satisfies a x equal to 0. So, x is means x is a recession direction. or a ray of the set right it is a direction along which you can keep traveling and not lose. But then every time I travel one unit of distance along x look at what is happening to my objective. I keep I keep get incurring uh, my c transpose x goes down by minus 1 goes down by 1 right. So, if I take this point x tilde ok and look at c and add an x to it where well, x plus x tilde is still in the set, but what about c transpose x plus x tilde? c transpose x plus x tilde is now c transpose x tilde minus 1 right. So, I can keep going. So, what and now if I if I so this is because I took a unit step in the direction x, if I took a step of length lambda in the direction x. I would still be within the set and my objective value would have dipped by lambda, lambda greater than or equal to 0 right. Eventually I can go along I can make my lambda as large as I want and that will drive my optimal value as low as I want right. So, this is again a contradiction contradicts what contradicts the assumption that the primal has a finite optimal value right. So, this So, optimal value of the primal is minus infinity which is a contradiction, contradiction since we assume that the primal must have a as a finite optimal value which means again case b is also not possible so, right. So, what have we got so far we have we concluded case a is not possible because in case a you get something better than the optimal which means you are contradicting optimality in case b we are getting something that that the optimal value is minus infinity which the hence we are of where we are contradicting that the optimal solution exists right it is that it is finite all right all right. So, in summary what we have shown is after all this what we have basically shown is this which I am let me put this here we ask we began through this analysis asking does the point 1 comma 0 belong to C and what have we shown? We have considered both cases and shown that no, it cannot belong to C. 
right. So, so the point what we have effectively shown is the 1 comma 0 does not lie in C, this is what we have shown. Thank you.